Wait, so I am Fox. And I'm Hanzo. And welcome to Two Smart Guys PSP Hacking 101, episode 30 something. 30 something, part two. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we, we going to be talking about today? Okay, so today we're just going to go over um, backing up a U, uh, UMD directly from your PSP without with, with uh, the current uh, custom firmware 5.50 D3, which is what you guys uh, put onto my PSP a couple weeks back. Cool. So, like, if you ever watched, like, four or five years ago when we did episode three, you had to load a special piece of firm, uh, software onto the PSP, and it took, like, forever to rip the UMDs. Oh, really? Yeah. This is way simpler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's actually built in now to firmwares. I think it's from... I think it's the 5.5 Gen series. They all have this little back end that's built in. So whenever you're on the home screen of your PSP, you hit the select button, and it brings up this extra menu that configures hardware settings. All right. Um, so, no, this is for backups of games that you own. Yeah, and, and believe me. We don't me, condone any piracy or anything like that. No, so. that's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have a UMD that you want to rip. And make sure it's in the drive. Otherwise, obviously, it's going to default to whatever's not there, which would be the UMD. So dump your UMD in. Go to your home screen. Hit select. And make sure you change your input device on, uh, which is the third op option down, USB device, and change your input to UMD disk. And then hit exit. And then connect using your USB. Now, you will see this, uh, this little new drive will show up and it won't say memory disk at the top like it will if it's formatted. You open it and there will be one file and it will say UMD9660. That is the actual ISO. And all you got to do is drag and drop it to your desktop and or wherever you like and it will start ripping it. And it'll rip, obviously, at USB 1, because that's what these lovely things are. But with in the case of Lumens, it's only 200 megabytes. It'll take about less than five minutes. Once it's ripped, go ahead and rename the file, because whenever you back up a UMD, it will show up with this exact same name each time. So it doesn't matter if it's Castlevania or Final Fantasy Tactics or Lumens or whatever. It'll always be UMD 9660. So it's good to name them something that isn't the same thing over and over, obviously it won't run or you'll be overriding things. Makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once the rip is complete, you'll want to basically just rewind and start over from the beginning, uh, going to your PSP's home menu screen and hitting select and you'll get that cute little multicolored menu. And then you'll just go back down to that third option and change it back to, um, to the memory stick and then hit exit. And then reconnect and you'll be able to browse your your main directory. So and do, then you just put them back into the um, ISO folder. Yeah. So if there isn't one, you gotta make one. Right, right. Create, and, an, create an ISO folder, folder in the root of your memory stick. But if you formatted your memory stick, it should already have all those awesome directory stuff. Or at if least you it did. For, if you format it from... from with, a, Custom firmware. Right. right, which I recommend you do because it sets up all the folders you need for other things like extra uh, software versions to run your PSX boots and stuff like that. Cool. Handy dandy. Okay. So this is all set then? Benefits to doing this. Running backups reduces load time. So like on clunky games like... Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics when it's ported to the PSP. Anytime you get magic or anything like that, there's like tremendously ugly, ugly load and slowdown. So the nice thing about having it on this is it's going to read it as fast as the static memory can travel, which is really fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, I, I don't know. It depends on the memory that you buy, but it can be like insanely faster. Right. So the cool thing is, like uh, any of the any of the high speed ones, any of the high speed uh, memory di memory cards that you get, or like the SD cards with the adapter, as long as they're high speed, you're going to get that that performance benefit. You get a class six card and put it in there or something. That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty <laughs> sweet. So uh, 
Yeah. Do you want to go over the other software stuff or? Sure. Might as well. Might as well. All right. Okay. What else? What else? What other goodies did you discover after we hacked your PSP? After <laughs> you left me with the PSP. <laughs> well, um, one of the things I discovered was uh, when I was um, was a uh, a good uh, multi disc eboot, which. According to a lot of the forum things that I read, you don't technically need a single eboot that's multi-disc because most games for the PlayStation, you, it would force you to save at the end of each disc. So it's not necessarily required, but some people like it all condensed. And so making an eboot of several uh, bin or Q files of a of a of your PSP game, or PS PS One games. Is kind of handy because it can it'll compress them one more time. Oh, and cool! So it, it wrap takes multiple up. discs and puts them into one eboot. That's correct. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you never have to switch discs, which is kind of which is kind of sweet. And the software I used is the PopStation Impaler, and I guess uh, on the show notes we'll have links to. Yeah, we'll have links to everything that we're talking about. Okay. Oh yeah, do you want to show them this cool little adapter that I got you? Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is kind of sweet. Fox gave me a present. So, I don't know how, if it's, there we go. This is a, uh, a little adapter, and it lets you take awesome micro SD cards and stick them in here. And, and there's two slots, and I haven't tried formatting them together to be one card, but um, it's nice to carry two around. I've got two 8 gig gigabyte ones here. And I swap in depending on what game set I'm, you know, traveling around with. So they just slide in, and then whatever's in the first position, that's what it loads by default. That makes sense. Yeah, and then the the second one's just a carrier. Yeah, the, the, the like Maryland or something. I can put a link to where you can buy this thing, but it was only like four bucks or something. <laughs> Way cheaper than buying a sixteen gig Sony stick. Yeah. <laughs> And way handier. Okay. Well, I can. I guess I can just go over quickly just uh, some stuff on the memory stick in terms of the the file directory that you want to put. Um, so, unless you're buying stuff from the Sony store, different uh, PSX uh, backups kind of kind of want different firmwares to run. Sometimes some of them will boot right up, like. Like in your guys' demo, Metal Gear Solid just ran, and there's no problem. But if I put in like Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, it would like start to load and then die. Really? And yeah, so I was like, well, this is kind of disappointing. I wonder what the solution is. And so I started looking around, and apparently for the 5.50 Gen series of firmwares, there's uh, a little thing you want to put into your. Uh, this is your. This is the PS, PSP's uh, memory card. Uh, root layer, um, and you'll want to add some files to SE plugins. SE plugins, there'll be this pops loader set, and it'll have like a readme text file, and then this directory of uh, these other pops loader firmwares. And it'll be like, there'll be like 10 of them in there. And it all comes zipped up as one, as one RER file, and then you just unpack it and drop all the stuff in here. Otherwise, they had like an earlier version, but you had to like hunt around on the internet for all the little pieces of it and it didn't work so good so they finally released this one that's compatible with all the gen alphabet series of firmware so it'll work with gen c and d and huh. so, so basically on. it's like a, a list of of games and which ones they work best with and that's pretty cool yeah and most everything's sweet spot is 372 i found with the stuff that i've loaded it all runs right away no crying. Cool. And then uh, the soft. You said there's software for for creating the book. The yes, yes. Uh, it on this machine. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Have oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. So Impaler is pretty much the same as the Pop Station interface, except it has disk numbers in order, and all you have to do is find your your. The, the sequence basically of you know like I have Final Fantasy IX disc one put it in the first slot etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, once you're done you can select a compression level which you know obviously if you compress it high that the the logic is that it compacts the file and you, but your seek time might go up a little bit right right 
Um, and then you can also do all of your, uh, um, you can add in all of your image information. So if you want to change that icon from that standard little PSX icon to something else and the wallpaper, you can do that all from there. Cool. And it's, it's super easy. And then it doesn't take very long for it to convert it. But don't try to use eBoots. So if, like, I made the big mistake <laughs> of, so I've ruined some software already. Uh, my my Xeno Gears boots are gone now, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the smartest guy on the planet. We just so, love the the ISOs. The ISOs no? weren't on the drive. Oh. Those are the only ones that didn't come across, I guess, or something. Oh. So I was like, oh. I still got them in my house. <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't try to do e-boots together. That's dumb. Don't be like me. So make sure if you're doing those multi-disc boots that it's from the original. Uh, ISO backup. Right. Yeah. Ground floor stuff with Zach. <laughs> was a. So like, yeah. I guess I could show the screen at some point, but that's it's not a big deal. And then um oh and your emulators you, was there something that you had about emulators? Yeah, there's a bunch of versions of uh, emulators out there, and I've kind of gone through all the SNES and Nestor, and there was only one really for uh, GBA that was any good and is readily available. And so we have the list there. Um, they actually just released a new version of Nestor J. It's like 1.12. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 1.11 would crash when I loaded certain ROMs. It was really odd. Like, I tried to load The Legend of Zelda because I'm really? a big nerd. Yeah, and it would like freak out and crash and just freeze. It would actually freeze the PSP and then the PSP would default for a little while and then just restart itself. Weird. Yeah, and that was unpleasant. So those are the three that I've been using so far and I, I, I like them. I mean, there's a lot of settings on there so you can change all the aspect ratios and stuff. So it can be like stretched widescreen so it fills the whole screen or it can be original and yada yada yada. So there's a, there's, and you get to do all your free states also. And I pulled a uh, save file. So if you have an emulator that you run on your Mac or something like that or on your PC, um, some of them will recognize the save states because it's, I guess it's the same stuff. Because the ROMs are all the same, so the save states are all the same. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so uh, NestorJ 1.12 Plus is out there, and there's uh, there will be a link to uh, where it's at. I've been going to... Yeah. J, um, or no, it's like QL or something like that. Website is I don't oh, know. Quick, Q, QJ. QJ. Quickjump.net. Quick yeah. Yeah. They've been they've been really good about uh, like it's pretty easy to find stuff. So Nestor's the good one for your Nest. Uh, there's two of these running around. One is the Euphoria. And that one's kind of clunky. The interface is a little odd. Um, the only downside with the GBA thing, you have to find a BIOS. Huh. And if you find one online, it might yell at you a little bit, but it'll it'll just boot it. Like it'll say this BIOS is not a legit BIOS or something like that. Really? But then it'll just run, so huh. it doesn't really care. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, but they all have like really elaborate menu systems and a lot of really cool customization. Were you saying something about backgrounds? Or? Backgrounds. Oh, I guess that was for just uh, when you're making your your uh, PSX uh, boots. There's I'm gonna put basically dimensions and file names and all that stuff collected in one place because it's kind of like spread out like everybody's like oh just drop these files into this directory well they have to be named something specific otherwise it's not gonna show up on your on your PSP. Okay. So we'll have that in the show notes? Yeah. So go to smartguys.com and look for this episode. Read the show notes because <laughs> everything that I don't explain is there. But yeah, it's it's uh, really pretty easy. I guess that wraps it up for this week. Thank you for for helping. Well, thank you for letting me uh, be a guest <laughs> anchor. <laughs> Thanks for for housing the show for the night, and we'll see everybody next week. We do shows every Wednesday night at uh, ten thirty Mountain Time. Justin TV. All right. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> this has been a Two Smart Guys production.
two friends must rise up and face their destiny. Holy! Trapped in an evil video game cartridge, the duo must seek out allies. What can I get for you, fellows? You better eat up, or you're gonna get squished too. Find a way to get beyond the clipping plane.